Build Science 301, a Build Original Series brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors, Arklin, and Huber Engineered Woods. Before we jump into Build Science 301 and all things control layers, I want to take just two minutes to highlight something that deserves more attention in our industry, fire protection. We talk a lot about air, water, vapor, and thermal, but what about fire as a control layer? That's where FirePoint from Arklin comes in. FirePoint is an advanced fire resistant sheathing that's engineered to give you serious performance without slowing down your build. It offers up to 53% more fire resistance than code requires, helping to slow flame spread, buy time for evacuation, and give first responders better access when it matters most. This is a solution designed for builders and architects who want real fire performance without sacrificing efficiency. The base of FirePoint is real CDX plywood, so it's lightweight, easy to install, and it's compatible with any cladding, so you're not locked into one finish or system. FirePoint is especially valuable in wildfire prone regions, but honestly, it's a smart choice for any project where safety is a priority. And when we talked about smarter building science, that's exactly what we mean. Products that both elevate safety and performance within a modern wall assembly. We're not just building to code anymore, we're building to face future challenges head on. So if you're designing for resilience, specifically fire resilience, stall flames and save lives with FirePoint. I'm Matt Reisinger, stay tuned for more right here on Build Science 301. All right, my friends, welcome back to Build Science 301. We got well, probably one of my favorite details here, Steve. We're talking the overroof, which is a ventilated and unventilated assembly, and then, Literally my favorite way to build, which I built my house with, the Monopoly truss roof. Now this Monopoly truss roof could also be a Monopoly hand cut, which I happen to do, but yep. the, the principle is the same. Yep. Where do you want to start? Let's talk about the detail. Overvented, and I made it a cathedralized roof system here because we had talked before about this dimension being a problem. Yep. And when we put the vent down here, that really we lose about maybe a quarter, 20% mm -hmm. of that space. So by putting a vent up here now means that we can now expand that to the full depth. Yeah. And you know, we haven't talked about it much here, um, but building science, you might, you, you might be surprised of, of what I'm about to say. The build science for remodeling and renovation work is exactly the same as build science for new construction. That's right. Right? So this is actually a detail where I'm showing it here as new construction, but we've used this on a couple projects where we've remodeled, mm -hmm. and it was a really good solution. It's a good so way to remodel. Basically just putting the vent on top, mm -hmm. right? And I show it as sheathing here, but I know you have done a bunch of vented roofs on top where this is the metal standing seam roof Yep. up there, and you just vent underneath it with some furring strips. Yeah, I mean, the venting over the roof uh, is just a great way to vent. And there's all, multiple ways to do that with either, you know, one buys with metal and doing that on top, or what Steve's showing in this detail, which is, you know, two layers of plywood. Uh, but it really gives you, a, it adds you a lot of forgiveness to the system while still leaving that unvented roof assembly, which I really need. And as a side note, for my northern builder friends, one of the reasons why we have so much ductwork in our attic spaces is we typically don't have basements, especially where I am in Texas. We have literally solid rock we were building on often. So we're, you know, we're excavating enough rock to get a slab on grade in, and that's it. We're not digging basements. So over the years, that's left us with not as much space to put our HVAC systems. And the easiest way for builders was to shove that up in that hot. Uh, ventilated attic space, which we talked about in an earlier episode, is really dumb. But going to these unvented assemblies really makes a big difference. And then the Monopoly one, Steve, if we can move over to this one, this is basically how I built my house. But what you're seeing here, if I, I'm sorry, I'm taking over. No, no, no. I love ahead, this man. one. <laughs> uh, this is wall sheathing, which is touching roof sheathing here. And then if you could draw in a little piece of tape right there for yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, I have it dashed in here because this is actually drawn inverted. So this would be, say, maybe a half-inch piece of plywood or something that gets put on there. And then we put two inches of, say, polyiso on the outside. Mm -hmm. So you would have the option where you could tape the CDX to the CDX, 
But in this case, you know, if you're taping all the joints ah. of this phone, oh, yeah, there you go. then I just simply turn that foil face into the primary air barrier there on the outside. And then I tape that up and then we can put that insulation down over the top of it. So it's really six of one, half dozen of the other. And again, like most things building science, it doesn't necessarily matter what you do, it's how well you do what you intended to do, right? Great and point. so the intention here was to use this as the air barrier and then connect it to the roof and then apply that roof insulation. Now, one of the things that always jumps out at me about this that says, okay, we're gonna do monopoly framing, that means I have to do this, mm -hmm. right? Because I push that up it really starts to push that fascia size. Now, mm -hmm. I could bring this up, right, and, and cut this somewhere in here, and that would solve for it. The problem with that is when I have my window down here, mm -hmm. right, aesthetically seeing a foot or 14 inches of wall above the windows on a one-story house, it starts to look a little goofy. Yeah, looks like your eyes are up like this. Yeah, <laughs> so there, there's a balancing act on the aesthetics of this. Do I just make this bigger? Do I split the difference in there? How do I do it? How do I solve for it? And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But, um, you know, this is a really great system because we have really good performance out here. We got our muscle car. Yep working for us, and then that muscle car is transferred into the roof system, right? And it's working for us, so let's... Uh, what are the challenges then we face when we go to this uh, these two assemblies, Steve? Is that a challenge? <laughs> it's my little scar from Lion King. Pretty good. <laughs> um, if we didn't know where that came from. All right, so the challenges, very much the same. We got our friend water, number one killer. All right, overhang, get a good distance there. We should be okay. Air, same thing. We wanna make sure we have a good air barrier along this line. This is the conditioned space, and this is the unconditioned space. Mm -hmm. So we wanna make sure we get that right across there. As far as vapor goes, we wanna make sure that vapor drive, but. We want it to also continue in there. You know, using plywood or some type of roof sheathing, it's gonna slow it down quite a bit, but it's still gonna allow some of that moisture to get up in there. But we could also talk about um, some ways that we can deal with that. And then as far as insulation goes, you know, one of the challenges here, we still have this depth, but that dimension is far better than when we had that dimension from the cathedralized vented roof. Yep. So that's working, you know, in our favor there. And from a remodeling perspective, this thing works really well, especially if this is board sheathing, right? On an older house in New England, you might find that as board sheathing. So now the moisture problem is just wicking up through all of those cracks. Yeah. So it's working well for us. <clears throat> and then, of course, the Monopoly house, water, Again, easily solved for. We talked a little bit about that dimension. Um, the air barrier, um, we show it there, but it's actually you know, gonna continue all the way up in there because this is actually a conditioned space, right? So we wanna make sure how we deal with that as well as the vapor going up through here and continuing up and then insulation. The question is, do we add anything more in there or mm -hmm. is this adequate and how do we solve for that? That is a really good system. You've kind of perfected it on the number of houses that you have done there, so. I do like the Monopoly, that is for sure. Let's talk about the solutions, shall we? Yeah, for this one, it's pretty easy. Um, water coming down, yep, drips off. Remember, we talked about gutters last time. Get a nice big overhang here. Right, that distance we're good at. We don't necessarily need a vent here, but remember I talked about remodeling. So um, in some cases we've done it where there's a vent there and then we simply will come up here and we'll cut a strip out of that. 
I like that and detail. leave that out. And then now this air can communicate from here into there and go up, mm -hmm. as well as going through the little core vent in a little shadow detail mm -hmm. and getting that air up and then venting up through there. And again, if this is board sheathing, it works even better for us. Yep. Which in New England, you know, kind of probably pre 1950s or something, you'd see extremely that. common. You'd, you'd, it's very very common. And the beauty of that system is because this is vented, you know, any moisture migration, we still want to control it here with some ventilation. We want to make sure we have some proper ventilation in there. Um, but getting that to go up through there, and then of course we put in our block here to keep the rafters from rotating we seal that in and then that blocks our wind washing here and then that allows us to put full depth insulation in the cathedral eye system yep one of the other times where we use this that you'll uh, understand why it's such a good system think for a minute instead of a cuffed roof let's call this a sips panel and we've done the same thing on top of a SIPS panel. Hmm. We've gone and we've put in strapping on top, put a second layer of half inch plywood, and we've over ventilated the SIPS panel roof. Makes a lot of sense. So it's a, another solution for Travis uh, Brungard just did a series on a house called Prairie Timber and Sun, and that's exactly what they did with a SIPS panel and an over roof for yeah. ventilation space. I think that's a great way to go. He said something on that that made me really think too. He said, you know, this. This sheathing here is a part of the OSB package, and if you were to nail shingles on there, when you rip those in 30 years, you might damage that SIPS panel. So by putting an almost sacrificial layer on the yeah. over roof, now I don't have nails penetrating this, and I can rip and replace that all day long without hurting my SIPS panel. That was a really uh, uh, great explanation from Travis Brungard on that. And the one that roof. we did where we did a SIPS panel, they actually make a self-adhered um, air, uh, vapor permeable membrane. Mm. So you could put that on. So if if this did spring a leak, it would just drain out down the bottom. Right. Um, and it, the water wouldn't penetrate in there. But the issue with SIPS panels, right, if I look at a, the, the plan of the roof, it's a bunch of panels. Mm -hmm. And the problem with a whole bunch of panels is everything in the middle of the panel is okay. But the challenges all migrate to the edges. Right. And so there you get air leakage and all kinds of crazy things happening yeah. at those edges. Yeah. So having a membrane there to basically blanket it puts a nice air barrier, weather-resistant barrier on the top of those panels. Travis actually used the fluid applied. He did uh, Prosigo's R-Guard system on the rooftop. Yeah. Because he was putting another layer of roofing on top. So that was kind of an interesting solution by his part. So... It works works very well. And you can see, again, you know, the adaptation of, well, that's a cut roof. I only do SIPs. Well, here I just showed you that the building science doesn't really care that that's a <laughs> SIPs panel or it's a cut roof or a truss uh -huh. roof. The physics are the same. We really need to stop complicating building science. Mm -hmm. We have to do, you know, in, in 101, I'm going to bring it up again, you know, we have to accept that building science is everywhere. I know some people say, well, you know, you guys do all this building science stuff. I'm just going to build a house. It's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it is dumb. Right? The minute you put two two-by-fours together, you're messing with building science. You've changed the rate of drying. You change the thermal properties uh -huh. of those two studs. So if you're a builder, you're doing building science, right. whether you acknowledge it or not. You might not be building a muscle car or a high-fuel dragster, but nonetheless, you're messing with building science. That's right. So talking about BS, let's talk Monopoly. What you're showing here, which I think is interesting, is you've got the exterior insulation. You also have cavity insulation shown, Yeah. which is what I did on my house. Uh, so I did uh, two layers of two inch on my roof deck, and then I came back in with an R30 bat on the inside. As a side note, I did rooftop ventilation uh, with this assembly by putting some one by fours on a 45 degree horizontal before I put my metal roof on. So I still have that extra forgiveness. And as a side note too, whenever I do these types of assemblies, I do like a full peel and stick uh, membrane on the whole roof. I wanna have that extra forgiveness to make sure I don't get any bulk water into the system. 
rather than just relying on a standard, uh, you know, underlayment. I really like that forgiveness with a with a true peel and stick membrane. But this is a great assembly. Uh, it does take a little bit more thought ahead of time yep. to do it, and it takes a little bit more labor. But man, is it a good assembly! Yeah, and I mean, we're working on one right now that is very similar to the Monopoly. And if if I said, okay, this was a say. 40 by 28 foot house, simple rectangle. It's pretty easy to resolve. When you start adding valleys mm, and uh, cross harder. ridges and stuff, it becomes a little more complicated, but all that really means is that we have to look at the detailing even more in depth because there's some challenges there. Yeah, I think this, this definitely lends itself to a more traditional gabled uh, roof. If you look at my house, if you look at the Reisinger build that we built, pretty similarly, some slight differences in details, pretty simple shapes. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes the simple shapes lead to really good outcomes yes. <laughs> because there's less uh, issues. I mean, if you think about putting a valley in a house, there's just one more area that could be a problem. I don't have any valleys at all yeah. on, uh, on either my house or the Reisinger build house. You know, living in New England, one of the benefits that we get that maybe you don't get as much of, I can drive into some towns and see 200-year-old houses, right? And what that tells me, though, when I drive around, there's two reasons why a house lasts 200 years. Somebody really, really loved it mm -hmm. enough to take extremely good care of it. That's a really good point. Or it applied really good building science to it. That's why it's still around. I love that. Right. Really smart. So, um, you know, running through, you do the vent, the over roof there. That's great. We still get our water management there. As far as air leakage, we're talking about this now being the primary air barrier mm -hmm. on the system. We could have short circuited it and ran up there. We could have also have done it in here. That's what I did in my house, I it, ran it there. It, it always just depends on what is your intention versus how do you solve the problem, mm -hmm. right? As far as vapor control, well, we just need to have a ventilation system. Yep. And in this case here, we can put it up here. Yeah, no problem at all. Right, and we can vent that out. And then as far as insulation goes, you can see we put this optional insulation in underneath the insulation up at the roof system there. And this is some plus R value there. But also notice, you know, we have this R and then we have some R plus here. Mm -hmm. So proportionally, this works very, very well going back to that building science rule of 10, 20, 40, 65. Yep. Right, it works, works very, very well. Steve, we only have one more episode. Can you believe it? It's getting down to the wire. We have not talked flat roofs. And so I say we jump into episode 11 next, where we're going to talk flat roof cavity insulated, flat roof over insulated. It's going to be good. That being said, good topics. like our friend Joe Stebrick says, it's not rocket science. It's build science. Don't forget. We got quizzes. We got booklets after this, so the fun doesn't stop at the vibe board. That's right. So at the end of each episode of Build Science 301, you're gonna have the opportunity to take a five question quiz. Answer all five of those right, and then go through all 11 modules on Build Science 301, and our team's gonna send you a certificate that says that you passed Build Science 301. And we have that for 101 and 201, right Steve? There we go. Don't forget, this is totally free. There is no charge. I think you should really take the time and make sure you get recognized for your efforts and your time. Get that certificate. This is a really big deal and this is a good foundation for the rest of your career. Build Science 301, a Build Original Series brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors, Arklin, and Huber Engineered Woods.